Laid out on the bench here, I have the components to a federal period inlaid car table that I'm going to apply shellac to using the brush. And some of the pieces have a mortise in them, like this leg assembly here. And in that mortise, I put this scrap piece of wood, and that acts as both a leg and a handle so that I have a way to let the piece sit in between coats while it's drying and also something to hold on to while I apply the shellac. And that works well for several of the pieces. Uh, the rear apron, the fixed part of the rear apron, is only finished on one side, so it can just lay flat on the bench. The uh, movable piece to the rear apron is finished on both sides, so it's held in this hand screw, but more about that in just a minute. And because of the configuration of this particular table, there are no mortises in the front assembly, so I'm going to leave this section here where the eagle is inlaid unfinished for now, and I can use that to grasp it while I apply the schlack to the rest, and I'll just carefully hang it off the edge of the sawhorse in between coats, making sure I don't knock it off. And uh, yesterday, I applied the sh uh, coat of D-Wax Dark Shellac to kind of enhance the color. So you can only do about one or two thin coats of that, or it'll start to muddy the, uh, the inlays. And the mahogany pieces to this table have had the grain filled, and that's important. I find that the open grain of some woods is distracting under a glossy finish. And if you were to try to fill the pores with shellac alone, just by applying several coats of it, you would get a very thick layer. And if you've mixed shellac from flakes, you know how brittle a finish it really is. So that could lead to problems down the road where you have the wood moving underneath the shellac. You could get some alligatoring or fracturing of the uh, film. So you want to keep the film as thin as possible. And that really is the key to successful brushing. And uh, here I have the shellac I'm going to use. This is uh, super blonde shellac. And its consistency, I don't know what you would call this as far as cuts concerned, but I did because I didn't measure that and never have, but it is water thin, very, very thin. And you would think at this consistency it would be impossible to build a finish, but it's not because you can apply the coats in such quick succession that I'll be able to put all the coats I need on this table within approximately a two hour span. And in the shellac I have added this shellac wet from Homestead Finishing Products. It only takes a couple drops per quart of this. Uh, I think they recommend 8 to 12 drops per quart really. And that slows down the set time that allows you to brush it out sort of like you would varnish. Not exactly, but it does give you considerably more open time to help you avoid some trouble areas like uh, what they call fat edges, which is where you allow the finish to roll over a sharp corner. And those can lead to problems when you go to rub out if you do that, because you'll have that thick area, and when you try to sand that level, you'll almost certainly sand through the thinner area adjacent to that and into your colored layer, and that creates a blemish that's very, very difficult to affect a, a good repair to. And in uh, cold weather, like I have here today, I don't do anything special to the shellac, but in hot weather, I'll put it in the refrigerator between coats to kind of keep it cool, make it a little bit more workable. And also in very hot, humid weather, you'll get a white or a cloudy appearance to it, a bloom as they call it. And the first time you see that, it'll scare you, but it will go away. It's just as a matter of being patient and allow it to uh, work itself out. It's really moisture trapped in the surface. It's best not to work under those kind of conditions, but if it happens, it's not the end of the world. And the brushes that I use are artist brushes made for watercolor. They're a golden Taclon. They're quite expensive. I have it in a 2-inch and a 1-inch width here. Uh, but they last forever, and they're very easy to take care of. Uh, in between applications of the shellac, I put them in this uh, asparagus can that I have a pin in, and then there's a corresponding hole in the brush so that the bristles are just suspended in denatured alcohol, not resting on the bottom. And when I'm done with the project, I'll wring out the excess shellac and allow the brush to dry, and it'll get rock hard. But when I need it again, a quick soak in the uh, denatured alcohol will have it ready to use. And uh, this is actually not part of the table, this piece here. This is from another project, but it's the biggest flat piece I have to demonstrate the basic brushing technique. You want to dip the bristles in, but you don't want a, uh, an excess of finish on it. And you want to clear it off down inside. If you do it on the lip here, the lid gets stuck, and you also get a crust of half-dried pieces that can contaminate your uh, jar. You want to start in about a half inch or so in from the edge, and barely touch the bristles to the surface and move down fairly slowly and then go off the end and then come back in a little bit in from the end and brush completely off this edge. 
that avoids having to finish a roll over the edge. And then subsequent passes overlap that one just slightly, maybe a quarter of an inch or so. Slowly put it on there. And always maintain that wet edge. So if I was working on a bigger piece, I'd have to concentrate more on working quickly enough that I maintain that edge that was wet. And if you start to feel it drag or get kind of sticky at any point, just stop because you're going to cause more trouble than trying to fix that spot. Better just to be patient and let it go. Now here's something I can do because it is cool and this is a very small piece. I can go back and almost tip it off like you would varnish. And now that has a good smooth even coat and it's going to be deceiving looking. It's going to be quite wet and wrinkled looking even after the final coat's applied. Uh, but that'll be taken care of in the rub out stage so you'll have to uh, work it through once and uh, get a feel for when to stop. My rule of thumb to stop is when an additional coat adds no more gloss. At that point you're getting where there's diminishing returns and that's when I stop. Now on the uh, curved apron sections here, very similar to that, uh, these two ends here are going to be a glue surface so I'm going to avoid getting the shellac on there. You just brush it on, come back, and flow it on there really nicely. And now the uh, apron piece here, that being uh, clamped in the hand screw complicates things just a little bit. It's hard to come back and uh, go off the edge. So I'm going to start back in from the edge again about a half inch, flow it on nicely. And yesterday when I applied the de-wax dark shellac, I also put some inside the bearing surface on the wooden hinge. That way when I rub out the finish, I can lightly sand that and apply a little wax in there and the hinge will work uh, very nicely. It won't bind or squeak or anything. Now to finish off, I'm going to start in a little bit from the edge, keep my brush almost vertical and just come right off that end to make sure that I don't have a buildup of any kind of finish on there. And then I'd go around and do the other sides of that. And now I'm going to do one of the legs. And what I would do is, for real, if I was doing this for real, I would work in a systematic fashion doing all the legs, so on and so on. And when I got back to my starting point, this would have this, uh, the initial coat would have set up enough that I can apply another coat. And depending on the climatic conditions, I can do that as many as three or four times. And then I'd have to stop because I would start to get a uh, tacky surface. And if I let it sit for around an hour or so, depending again on the climatic conditions, I could apply the final coats. And I think in this instance, uh, oh, I'm guessing that a total of uh, five or six coats will be enough to uh, build up the surface thick enough to rub it out and also uh, not so thick that you got the problems I talked about. Now brushing the legs is a little bit different because we want to at all costs avoid having the finish run over the edge. So up here at the top where the leg is fairly wide I'm just going to brush it on making sure the bristle doesn't extend over the edge and stop when I get down to where the bristles match the width of the leg. Come back up here and do the other edge doing the same thing. And then I'm going to take, barely putting any shellac on the brush, I'm going to start in here where the bristles match the width of the leg and touch it to it. And as I go down, I'm going to rotate the brush so that it matches the width of the leg. And I never want to brush back up the leg like this because that will roll finish over the edge. And now to finish off, I'm just going to take the brush, going down each edge very carefully. There I let the bristles go over the edge a little bit and I have to look and see if that caused a problem. It didn't. If it did, you could take and hold it where the edge is kind of like a 45, you know, or you're right at the edge where you're 45 degrees off the vertical on each side and take the brush down there. But I like to avoid doing that because that can make a thick edge back farther in here that has the same problem when you go to rub out. I'll do the same thing on this back leg or the back of this leg, I should say. The 
it's that light touch that's important. And, of course, the consistency of the shellac. And that's pretty much all there is to brushing that. And now I will uh, go around here and apply the coats, as I said, and allow them to dry for uh, three to five days, again, depending on the temperature in the shop. And then they should be sufficiently hard to uh, do the rub out.